As faculty marshal, I now open the 2022 Teal College commencement exercises. Please stand for the invocation delivered this morning by campus pastor Brian Riddle. Good morning. Let us pray. Lord, you have sustained us in this place for another academic year and shepherded us through obstacles and challenges to reveal our strengths. We invite you to be present with us today to fill this space with your abiding love. Bless these graduates and their families and draw them toward a bright future of authentic community, compassionate service, and magnanimous generosity. As they use their new tools and skills to remind them of their purpose, their passions, and their strengths, that they may boldly go from Teal College to live full lives, rich with meaning and purpose, enjoying and enriching the world which you love. Cast out all hatred and fear and unite us all in your never-ending love. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. As chair of the Teal College Board of Trustees, it is my honor and my pleasure to welcome you to the 2022 commencement ceremony. We will be celebrating the achievements of our undergraduates and for the second year in a row, our graduate students. I know everyone here is excited and proud to see their child, their friend, walk across this stage. For our graduates, commencement is a time of celebration. And we, your Teal community, the Board of Trustees, President Traverso, the cabinet members, the faculty, the staff, and other students, we all applaud your accomplishments of each of every one of you today. The class of 2022 is inspiring. Together, you not only survived a pandemic, but you thrived and you achieved. We congratulate you on that. Today, on your final walk as a class through the historic Brother Martin's Walk, you made the journey with your friends, your brothers and sisters, your teammates, your mentors, advocates, and people with whom you have built bonds that will last a lifetime. So I urge you to enjoy this moment, to allow yourself to feel the pride of knowing that the achievement of a degree from Teal College has prepared you for what lies ahead. We, the members of the Teal community, look forward to seeing what each of you will accomplish. And we trust that you will use your talents to lead your lives with meaning and purpose. Thank you, Leah. Oh boy, as president of Teal College, I am honored. I am thrilled to congratulate the class of 2022. For both the undergraduates and the graduate students here, today is a celebration of all you have accomplished. Your academic studies, in your academic studies and as members of the campus community, you have grown and changed over the time you've been in college and your engagement with Teal has made the college a better place. As you receive your degrees today, graduates, I hope you'll reflect on the influence the college has had on your life and on the impact you've had on Teal. As you move into the next stage of your life, starting a career, pursuing graduate school, you will continue to be shaped by your organizations you join, the companies, the institutions, um, but it is my hope that your experience at Teal has impressed upon you that you have the power to shape your own life and you can influence for the good the world around you. This is what the college means by launching the leaders the world needs now. As Teal graduates, you are individuals 
who can shape your lives, bringing meaning and purpose to all you do, and of equal importance, you can influence the world around you. Families and friends of the graduates, thank you for joining in the journey of these students, soon graduates. Thank you for, uh, for being with us. We share the care, your care, for them, and we are grateful for your partnership as we guide these students, you and us together, encouraging them, keeping them focused on their educational goals. Your belief in them and your trust in Teal have led to their success. Together, our graduates and undergraduate students make the Teal learning community. Whether earning an associate, bachelor's, or master's degree, Teal students gain a sense of belonging, and in a supportive environment, they prepare for lives of meaning and purpose. And students, as your life unfolds, careers, graduate school, community service, families, Teal will continue to be here to support you. You have gained a sense of belonging at Teal, and as alums, you will continue to enjoy that membership throughout your lives. Your professors, classmates, coaches, teammates, friends have connected you to each other and connected you to Teal. Those connections are for life. You have been Tomcats, you are Tomcats proud today, and you will remain Tomcats forever. Congratulations, class of 2022. It is now my distinct pleasure to present the first honorary degree candidate to be recognized today. Among the many traditions unique to higher education, the presentation of honorary degrees is among the most significant. It is an opportunity for colleges and universities to recognize outstanding individuals who have excelled as leaders in their fields and in service to their communities. Today, we are honoring two distinguished individuals in science and medicine. Both this year are Teal graduates. It's a special joy to recognize them this year as we celebrate the new Roadhouse Science Building and as we, all of us here together, express our deep gratitude to the scientists and the medical professionals who served us so well through the pandemic. And so now let me present Dr. Catherine Held. Dr. Held graduated from Teal College with a bachelor's degree in chemistry. Her classmates remember her as a serious student and admired her keen interest in science. As a sophomore, she was inducted into the sophomore honorary program for women. And in her junior year, she joined Beta Beta Beta, the honorary degree for biology majors perhaps a foregrounding of the academic path she would pursue in graduate school. Her classmates in Tri Beta, I'm told, take credit for influencing her career path and for getting her to have some fun at their parties. Parties, I've recently er learned, were held in the greenhouse. Did the president know about that, Leah? Okay. Uh, there are other stories of chemistry in that time at Teal, stories that have something to do with washing lab coats, and some of them coming out bright red and others coming out bright yellow. Good memories from undergraduate years at Teal. Well, Kathy earned her degree, as I said, in chemistry in 1975. In her senior year, she had the opportunity to go to Argonne National Laboratory in Chicago, where she worked in a laboratory of a famed radiation biologist, and it was there that her interest in basic scientific research was sparked. Inspired, she set aside her plans for, grad for medical school and went to the University of Texas in Austin to earn a PhD in medical in biological sciences in 1979. Over the past 40 years, Dr. Held has had a distinguished career as a scientist and leader in the field of radiation biology. She is currently serving as the president of the National Council on Radiation Protection and Measurement, NCRP, 
This organization is a private, nonprofit scientific organization that collaborates with other national and international organizations and councils regarding the scientific and medical use of radiation. As president, Dr. Held has overseen this organization's activities, including publications of important reports and annual conferences that bring together scientists from across the nation and across the world. First elected to the council in 2016, 20, 26, uh, 2006, Dr. Held was also on that board uh, for several years. Among her duties then, she served as the chair of the program committee for the 2011 annual meeting on the scientific and policy chal challenges of particle radiation in medical therapy and space missions. So from teal to space science, pretty good. Dr. Held is an associate radiation biologist in the Department of Radiation Oncology at Mass General Hospital in Boston and an associate professor of radiation oncology at Harvard Medical School. Dr. Held has uh, served on numerous review panels, including panels uh, associated with the National Institutes for, of Health, the National Autoerotic and Space Administration, NASA, and the U.S. Army Medical Research and Material Command Program. Dr. Held also teaches radiation biology to radiation oncology, medical and physics residents and graduate students at Mass General Hospital, Harvard Medical School, and Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Dr. Held's outstanding accomplishments as a scientist and professional in her field makes it only appropriate for Teal to recognize her with an honorary degree. Joined today by her husband, Bob Siskowski, Dr. Held, Kathy to us, has come home to Western Pennsylvania and to Teal. Today we honor her and her remarkable career in science and in service to others. President Traverso, please bring the candidate forward. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees and by their action, I confer upon you, Dr. Catherine Held, the degree Doctor of Science Honoris Causa with all the rights the privileges and responsibilities thereto pertaining. honorary degree I've <laughs> ever received. I'm, I'm just so humble, so, so honored to be here today and to receive this degree. I really want to thank President Traverso and the Board of uh, Trustees and you, the community at Teal. It's, it's hard to imagine what a firm foundation I received in my education here at Teal and, and how far it has taken me. I, I couldn't have done so many of the things I did without the love and the nurturing and the caring that I received here from faculty and from friends. Um, it has been a, a very special time to come back to Teal. As we walked around campus yesterday, we were so impressed with the facilities. Uh, we got to see the new science center, and I wandered around, and I kept saying, oh, that's the little room where we, you know, as chemistry majors used to sit. And, and it was really uh, very important to me to see all that's gone on here and how things have changed and improved. And last night at baccalaureate was just wonderful. It was so impressive to see the, the students talk with such uh, warmth about their education here at Teal because that's certainly the way I have felt. 
and, and I really uh, want to congratulate all of you. And I have one message. While I was at Teal and after I went on to Texas, I had a poster that I put on the wall in my room. It was a beautiful picture of a big starry night with a, a moon brightly shining. And it had the words, happy are those who dream dreams. And that's what I want to say to you today. Dream your dreams and use the strong foundation that you've received in education and in life here at Teal College to help you achieve those dreams. So thank you again to, to the board and to everyone for this degree and to the graduates today, congratulations. Dream your dreams and have a wonderful life. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Mark Benninghoff, and I'm an 82 graduate of Teal and currently the Secretary of the Board of Trustees. It's my great honor and privilege uh, for me to present my colleague and friend, Dr. Robert David Burns, for his honorary degree. Bob is one of five children, all first generation college graduates. Bob grew up in Ashland, Ohio, and worked in Mansfield, Ohio for his entire career. How wonderful it is that his mother, Carol, is here today to celebrate both Mother's Day and Bob's honorary degree conferral. Bob is also joined by his partner, Dr. Gene Folden, and Lee Elshoff, his very dear friend. So thank you for joining us. Bob graduated from Teal College in 1974, summa cum laude, with a BA in chemistry. In 1978, he received his medical degree for, from the Ohio State University. And in 1981, Bob completed his pediatric residency at the University of Nebraska. While at Teal, Bob was the um, sports editor for the Talensian Yearbook and co-captain of the Teal swim team. In fact, to this day, 45 years later, Bob holds the Teal College record for the fastest 200-yard breaststroke. Isn't that amazing? 45 years later. <laughs> yes, applause. Now, he did tell me. <laughs> Bob did confess to me that uh, he thinks it's only because Swimming was eliminated as a sport, a varsity sport, the year after he graduated. <laughs> and they filled in the swimming pool with dirt and made it a uh, wrestling uh, 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 match. So, um, <laughs> but you know what? A record's a record, right? 45 years. So, as a trustee of Teal College, um, you're expected to uh, contribute in three ways, time, talent, and treasure. And Dr. Burns checks all three boxes. In terms of time, he served on the Teal College Alumni Board. He completed three nine-year terms, 27 years, on the Teal College Board of Trustees. Um, and we're hoping, now that he's retired, he'll consider a fourth term uh, in joining the board. In terms of talent, he was the chair of the Governance Committee, the chair of the Building and Grounds Committee, and a supporter and advisor to the sciences. In terms of treasure, treasure Bob is one of the most generous uh, individuals and alumni of Teal College. In fact, Dr. Burns recently made a leadership gift of $6 million to help future generations of Teal students. Thank you, Bob. In addition to building the premier academic, um, premier pediatric practice in the Mansfield, Ohio region, Dr. Burns' service to the humanities include being a member of St. Timothy's Lutheran Church Richland County Child Fatality Review Board, 
the Medical Advisory Board for the Rehabilitation Center of North Central Ohio, a board member at the Good Shepherd Lutheran Home, a board member of the Center for Individual and Family Services, and STOP, S-T-O-P, a sexual abuse prevention program. In 2016, Bob sold his practice to Akron Children's Hospital, and in retirement, Bob enjoys, number one, practicing his swimming daily, so if needed, he could defend that title, and uh, collecting art focused on tr early 20th century Ohio Impressionist and post-Impressionist. He has even loaned his, work to his works to various small museums and exhibits about Ohio art and Cleveland art. I hope you'll agree with me that Dr. Burns' outstanding contribution to the pediatric medical profession, care to his patients, as well his, as his contributions to the community and to Teal College make it appropriate today to recognize him with an honorary degree. President Traverso, would you please bring the candidate forward? By the power vested in me, by the Board of Trustees, and by their action, I confer upon you, Dr. Robert Burns, the degree Doctor of Science Honoris Causa, with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto pertaining. Thank you, Mark, for that kind introduction. <laughs> Class of 2022, President Traverso, Board of Trustees, faculty, staff, family members, and honored guests. Thank you so much for this great honor. Teal College made such a gr uh, great difference in my life, and I'm deeply, deeply grateful for this. Let me offer my congratulations to the graduating classes today for achieving your goals after years of hard work in less than ideal circumstances. You did it, you made it, you persevered, and I'm excited for you to discover the doors that a Teal degree will open in the next phase of your life. Congratulations. When Board Chair Leah Dever and President Traverso called to tell me of this great honor, I was stunned and, and speechless. Well, unfortunately, I'm not speechless today, but I'll try to keep it brief. Dr. Traverso talked to me a bit later and mentioned that the graduates and their families expect to be addressed. I interpreted this as needing to impart some sort of wisdom to you. Now, I don't feel like a particularly wise person, and I felt the panic begin to creep in. I cast about for topics, being a lifelong learner, and then there's always be bold and take risks. But I didn't think I could pull that one off. I mean, really, how would you feel if your doctor walked in for your appointment and exclaimed, I'm feeling bold today. <laughs> Let's take some big risks with your health care. <laughs> so I procrastinated, as I often do, by picking up a book to read to take my mind off things. And my stack of library books was one of those books that I should have read but had never gotten around to. It's actually one of the best-selling books of all time. It's The Little Prince by the French author Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, who was also a pioneering French aviator. This book was born out of Saint-Exupéry's monumental crash in the Sahara Desert and subsequent wandering for four days without food or water. He was hallucinating. He was seeing mirages and until he was eventually rescued after four days. In the book, a boy prince travels the universe from planet to planet 
meeting strange characters as he seeks deeper meanings in life. He eventually visits Earth and encounters a downed pilot wandering in the desert, which forms the meat of the story. But before the prince encounters the pilot, he meets a desert fox. The fox feels like his life would be enriched if he were tamed. And in explaining to the prince how to tame him, he explicitly says not to use words. For as the fox puts it, language is the source of misunderstandings. And this statement struck a chord with me. Although language is typically the vehicle through which we understand each other, my journey through medicine has allowed me to see miscommunication and misunderstanding and sometimes bad outcomes. Now, class of 2022, I know that you've completed a presentational literacy requirement, so I'm sure that you can express yourself clearly. And healthcare providers also know the importance of clear communication. So I feel that often when there are misunderstandings, the problem can be in the listening. As physicians in those circumstances, when things have gone awry, we're quick to point the finger at the patient. They didn't listen. They didn't follow through. They're non-compliant. But often the fault lies with the doctor. We didn't listen to the patient's history because we were distracted. We were tired. We got interrupted. We failed to ask the right questions. Did you know the average doctor interrupts the patient within 15 seconds of them starting to tell their story? That doesn't sound much like listening. It's enough of a problem that many medical schools require a course in listening to improve these skills. But good listening skills transcend medicine, and I think the value of being a good listener will have benefits to you as you work with customers, clients, patients, students, and coworkers. So I'd like to make some points on the value of being a good listener and give you an account of some of my own adventures in listening. Number one, if you're a good listener, you'll cultivate trust and your relationships can be deeper and more satisfying. Let me tell you about a patient I saw many years ago that taught me a lot about listening. A very young, first-time single mother brought her three-month-old son to see me for a cough. She had sought medical attention in the emergency room on two of the last three nights. There, the baby was examined, observed, and discharged with reassurance that everything seemed okay. She came to my office, described his symptoms to me, congestion and cough, and gasping for air at times. There was no fever, he was still feeding well. She just felt that there was something really, really wrong. As I observed the baby in her arms, he didn't seem to be in any distress. In fact, he didn't cough the whole time I was in the exam room. Other than a stuffy nose, his examination was normal. Ears and throat checked out, nice clear breath sounds, normal heart, soft abdomen. The little guy looked like he had a simple head cold. I totally understood why the emergency room had released him each time. But you can listen with your eyes, too. This mother looked exhausted. And when questioned, she hadn't slept in 48 hours, fearful that something terrible would happen. She had no backup help, and the look on her face was beyond concern. It more, looked more like panic. My doctor brain kicked in, and I thought about other things that this could be. And although though I was skeptical that there was anything seriously wrong, it was clear that we needed to check some things out. I made arrangements to admit him for 24 hours of observation, ordered some lab work, a couple nasal swabs to check for infection, and a chest x-ray. I also ordered a very basic monitor that alarms for breathing difficulties and for heart rates that are too high or too low. Well, we made it through 45 minutes of observation. One of the most experienced pediatric nurses on the unit witnessed the baby begin to cough, then get extremely red in the face, and then a dropping of the heart rate to an extremely low level. She called me right away asking for my help. So I hustled over to the hospital and also witnessed a second truly frightening episode. The nurse and I stabilized the baby and we prepared him for transport to a nearby children's hospital. After what we had seen, I was not surprised the next day when one of the swabs came back positive for pertussis, the whooping cough. A few days later, I saw the baby in follow-up. I had barely finished greeting his mother 
when she just looked at me and said, you listen to me. You listen. And what I learned in that moment was that listening skills were not just important for me to do my job. Listening was extremely important to and appreciated by the patient. I was amazed by this, and it changed the way that I practiced medicine. The mother felt validated. She felt believed, despite my initial gut feeling about the baby. We developed a mutual trust and had a long, gratifying doctor-patient relationship as I played a small part in the raising of her son, subsequent siblings, and eventually her grandchildren. Number two, if you're not listening, you're not learning. The teacher Buddha puts it a bit more bluntly. If your mouth is open, you're not learning. Now you've spent the last four years listening and learning, and you've made it here today, so I'm certain that you're good at it. And I feel confident that you're aware that there will be continuing education and updates as you pursue your career. But learning also takes place in venues other than formal instruction. In my work, I've learned from colleagues, consultants, nurses, parents, even the kids. I once saw an eight-year-old girl being reluctantly marched down the hall for a checkup. I was at a nearby workstation doing some charting. I saw her stop and look at a framed print in the hallway. It was an N.C. Wyeth print about the settling of Pittsburgh. It depicted soldiers and Native Americans standing at a fort at the confluence of the Allegheny and Monongahela rivers. A Union Jack flew prominently overhead. I was busy, but she was motioning to me, wanting to tell me something. With her mother beaming at her side, this eight-year-old took me to school about the Union Jack. She proceeded to tell me that the Union Jack was a combination of the er two earlier flags and that this particular version of the flag predated 1801 because it had simple white diagonal stripes, not the red and white diagonals of today. I listened amazed. She was only eight. I told her how interesting that was and how cool it is to learn new things. I looked it up later and she was spot on. And although the interesting historical facts that she passed on did not impact my work life, it did make me appreciate the fact that anyone you ever meet will know something that you don't know and you can learn from them. Number three, if you're not listening, you don't know to ask the right questions. And this can be so important in problem solving. Another patient, a 12-year-old boy came to my office with fever, headache, chills, vomiting, and diarrhea. He had been seen by pr other providers twice before, and despite reassurances, was getting worse, not better. His parents at this point were extremely concerned. When I walked in the room, his eyes looked sunken, and his skin even looked a bit yellow. I listened as his parents filled me in about his symptom. And while examining the patient, I heard the father say to the mother, should we say something about the trip? So I asked, where did they go? To Guatemala. Now this interesting tidbit had not come up in the previous visits or had fallen through the cracks. So as well as considering things like gastroenteritis, mononucleosis, hepatitis, I definitely needed to ask some more questions what kind of trip was this? It was a mission trip to help build a church. Tell me about the food you ate and the water you drank. Did you swim in any lakes, any rivers? Did you get mosquito bites? Well, this young man was definitely dehydrated, so I arranged to admit him for IV fluids. Because of his travel, though, I ordered some special stool studies and a special stain on a blood smear, as well as the usual lab work. An hour later, I finished seeing patients and headed to the hospital to see how things were progressing. I first, though, stopped at the lab to see if any test results were done. When I walked into the lab, I will always remember this, I saw every single technician standing around a single microscope beside an open textbook. <laughs> Each one would look through the scope and look at the book, look through the scope and look at the book. So I took my turn and saw through the microscope what was beautifully pictured in the book, red blood cells filled with microscopic parasites called plasmodia. We all stood in absolute amazement because though malaria is not uncommon in the world, in Ohio it is truly rare. 
And we all realized that this was likely the only time in our lives that we would ever see this. Well, after we'd had our medical moment together, I contacted the Children's Hospital because this was definitely more than we were prepared to treat. I talked with a wonderful but incredulous infectious disease special who accepted the patient and tr transfer, and sh she did call later that night and confirmed the diagnosis. The good news for this patient, he recovered beautifully. The bad news, every intern, resident, medical student stopped in to check him out. <laughs> He and his family were grateful for the peace and quiet when he returned home. And finally, point number four. If you're not listening, you're not open to compromise. Now in today's hyperpolarized world, the word compromise seems to have negative connotations. Many would say that it's a sign of weakness. But if you think about our great country, it was born out of compromise. James Madison didn't write our founding document, the US Constitution, in a couple days. It was the product of weeks and weeks of talking, listening, debating, and yes, compromising. When my pediatric practi practice functioned privately, I had four well-trained, brilliant, and opinionated physician partners. It could be incredibly difficult to make business decisions or make changes in our practice policies. It was only when we started listening to each other and making compromise that we got anything done. And when we did that, I was truly amazed at the work that we did together. In your working and personal life, you will meet people with whom you deeply, deeply disagree. But show the respect of listening. That doesn't necessarily mean that you agree with them, but try to be that person who finds the little bit of common ground that leads to a path of moving forward and working together. So class of 2022, as you leave Teal College to make your mark on this world, if it suits you, be bold and take risks. But remember, keep those ears open, listen, learn, and be amazed. Thank you. Thank you, Bob, for those words of wisdom. And now the talented members of the Teal Singers will perform two pieces under the direction of Brianne Sampson, Teal Singers.
Let's thank them one more time. Congratulations. <laughs> awesome job, everyone. One of the most significant honors a college can bestow on a professor is the title of emeritus upon retirement. Such an honor requires a minimum of 10 years of service at Teal, a minimum of 20 years of service to the profession of education, and excellence in the profession of education. It is absolutely my honor and privilege to recognize and award the title of Professor Emerita to Dr. Catherine Franz. Starting as an assistant professor at Teal College in 1998, Dr. Franz served over 20 years at Teal College. She was an assistant professor at Delaware Valley College in chemistry and a teacher at Franklin Area High School prior to joining the faculty at Teal. She has over 30 years of service to the profession of education and, and has demonstrated excellence in many ways. Dr. Franz accelerated in the classroom, earning the title Distinguished Teacher Award in 2012. She has taught a number of different courses during her time at Teal, including Organic Chemistry 1 and 2, Biochemistry 1 and 2, Advanced Topics in Biochemistry, Science or Global Heritage 1 and 2, Forensic Science, Medicinal Chemistry 1 and 2, and the DHI Emerging Reality Laboratory. She has advised many undergraduate research projects with students presenting their results at the local American Chemical Society meetings, as well as our own Symposium Day here on campus. She was also the academic advisor to many of our chemistry and biochemistry students, and served as the official pre-pharmacy advisor for Teal. She was a dedicated member of the Teal College faculty, earning the Distinguished Service Award in 2008 and again in 2016. She was also dedicated to the chemistry profession as she was actively involved in the American Chemical Society Penn Ohio Border Section and as a member of the executive board for nearly 20 years, serving as chair, chair elect, member at large, and secretary. Please join me in congratulating Dr. Franz on earning the title of Professor Emerita of Chemistry at Teal College. Dr. Franz, please come to the stage. Thank you, Kathy. You are adored. The individual presenting the senior class gift is Charles F. Lichtenwalter. Charles is president of the senior class. He'll now present the gift from the class of 2022 to President Traversa. Before I begin, I'd like to uh, thank my fellow classmates for reposing this honor in me. Um, I hope this gift represents a reason to come back to Teal and to share in more mem memories in the future that we can create just like we have in the past four years. President Traverso, members of the Board of Trustees, administration, faculty, staff, family, and friends. On behalf of the class of 2022, I would like to thank you for to par participating in this ver very special occasion with us, and more importantly, for providing us the support opportunities and your belief in us to reach this once-in-a-lifetime accomplishment. My name is Charlie Lichtenwalter 
and as president of the senior class, I have the privilege of presenting President Traverso with the senior class gift. The tradition of providing a senior class gift was developed by students as a way for the graduating class to leave their mark and legacy behind. As the class of 2022 will soon transition in moments from being students to joining the ranks of our alumni, our gift will symbolize our continued love for Teal College and our class's new tradition of philanthropy to our alma mater. I am very proud that a large percentage of our class has participated in this gift, and we were able to raise over $1,000, and I hope to see that number continue to grow. The gift we have chosen to leave the college is to be f used to furnish and create a student communal space in the courtyard outside of the Science Connector. Our hope is that this gift will help to advance the goal of the connector and provide comfortable outdoor space for students, faculty, and staff to connect and form deep relationships. Seniors and members of the community, it is never too late to make your contribution. Please speak with myself or David Hummel about how you can assist in the future. We plan to hold the class gift dedication during homecoming 2022, the week of, of September 24th to the 26th. So please mark your calendars and make plans to come back to campus to celebrate and visit. Thank you and congratulations to all the members of the class of 2022. Thank you. It is my deep pleasure and honor to accept this gift on behalf of the class of 2022. It's a f reflection of your philanthropy and your commitment to the college. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. It's now my great pleasure to introduce our commencement senior orator, Emily Baker, graduation class of 2022. <laughs> Emily is an accounting and business management major. She's involved with many groups and organizations, including the Dietrich Honors Institute, Teal Student Support Network, and honor societies such as the Chi Eta Sigma Business Honors Society and Alpha Chi. Following graduation, Emily is going to work as a staff accountant at McGill Power Bell and Associates. Dr. Diverso. Members of the Board of Trustees, administration, faculty, staff, family, friends, and fellow graduates of the class of 2022. I am grateful for this opportunity to address you on such a joyous and important occasion. I want to personally thank everyone for joining us today at Teal College's 148th commencement. Fellow students, we have finally reached graduation, the, the peak of our college careers. And somehow, I'm still standing up here wondering what homework is due for tomorrow, if that makes sense. How do I even begin to illustrate the last four years that have come and gone so quickly? We have endured so much while at Teal, and I want to take the time to reflect with you all today. I have a question for not only my classmates, but for everyone here today. Who are you? Sure, we're students, professors, colleagues, friends, and family who have known each other for what feels like forever. What is it that defines you? For the graduating class, it felt like that defining factor was always school. It is practically all we have known so far in our lives. Countless hours balancing classes, homework, and extracurricular activities. And let's not forget the other obligations outside of the classroom, like our relationships and our jobs. Ah, and a pandemic, just doing normal stuff. I have always thought that college students truly do not get enough credit. That's something to take up with the registrar. And based on the things we have overcome and accomplished, I don't think that statement could be more true. Now that this chapter is closing, we must step back and evaluate who we are and who we will be as we navigate the world in its current state. I remember my first days at Teal as a time of excitement with so many challenges and opportunities ahead. Meeting new people, 
trying out new clubs and organizations, pursuing leadership positions, and deciding what we wanted to do with the rest of our lives. We truly had no idea what was to come in the following years, which was the best part. Who would have thought that we would return home during the spring semester of sophomore year, away from friends, our favorite professors, and potential memories to be made? We all had to adapt rather quickly to our new environment while processing everything that we had lost, like learning how to navigate Moodle and Zoom while losing opportunities to play our favorite sports, attend sorority formals, go on study abroad trips, complete internships, and way too much more. But it turns out, the hardships that we faced came with unexpected blessings. The technology we now have has truly broadened horizons in terms of our personal and professional growth, revealing new career opportunities and ways of learning, as well as increasing our confidence and pushing boundaries. Most importantly, because of our collective efforts, we are together today and in person, and I truly feel that we have come to value our time together so much more than we ever did. We now understand that we have the strength and tools to overcome such uncertain and difficult circumstances, which brings me to the answer to my original question. Who are you? I want to share with you all a quote by American author Robert Schuller that seems fitting for this occasion. Tough times never last, but tough people do. It is how you react to the adversity that you face that shows your true potential. Our class, as well as the entire Teal community, have managed to come together, pick each other up, and carry on business as usual. Because of this, we are resilient, both as individuals and as a graduating class. No matter what we had to do to make it to this point, we did it. We have made it through quite possibly some of the hardest days of our lives so far, and we are all the wiser. Now that we are graduating and beginning the next part of our lives, we can be confident in the fact that no one can take away our knowledge, strength, and experiences. Whether you are off to start your first professional job or you are pursuing additional education, I am sure that we as graduates are experiencing similar feelings. We are all heading in different directions after we leave here today, and that is absolutely terrifying and exciting all at the same time. My mind is constantly going in circles as I attempt to process these feelings. Sometimes I think I'm 100% done, I'm ready to go, but then I think, what do you mean we're done? How is that even possible? Which also depends on the day of I'm having sometimes. So as one last message to the class of 2022, please remember to take care of yourselves, be proud of all that you are and everything that you have accomplished and be humble enough to realize that there are always new challenges and opportunities just around the corner. Last but not least, to the members of the Teal community, family and friends, we never could have done it without you. Thank you. It's my privilege to ask the following students who have earned the top ranking in their class to please come to the stage in the following order, using the steps to your right. Our valedictorians, those students with the highest grade point average, and our salutatorian, the student who has achieved the second highest academic honor. Students, please remain on the stage after receiving your medal. It is the distinction of degree-granting academic institutions to recognize its students who have achieved a grade point average of 4.0 and to grant them the title of valedictorian. Today we honor Emily Nicole Baker. <laughs> Brianna Violata.
Rachel Bell Breckenridge. Megan Elizabeth Brewer. <laughs> Courtney B. Grubbs. Alexander Carl Lutz. <laughs> Daniel J. Lutz. Molly Elizabeth Scheffler. It's also the distinct privilege of degree-granting academic institutions to recognize their students who have achieved the second highest GPA and to grant them the title of salutatorian. Today we honor Sydney Marie Polarski. invite the audience, the platform party, and the faculty to please join me in congratulating these students. Now that they found their seats. I'm Dr. Greg Butcher, Associate Anchor Dean for Student Success. It's my pleasure for the family in the room. This is the moment you wanted. Your students are coming to the stage. Get your phones ready for those pictures. You can clap. That's great. <laughs> Will the candidates for the Associate's Arts degree, candidates for the Associate of Science degree, candidates for Bachelor of Science degree, candidates for Bachelor of Arts degree, candidates for Masters of Business Administration, and the candidates for Masters of Communication Leadership, please rise. That's you. President Verso, on behalf of the faculty, I have the privilege to present these candidates for conferring of their degrees. We will ask that the graduates come forward to receive their degrees. The marshals will call you forward ro ro with rows beginning with the candidates for the master's degrees. I draw your attention to the table of flowers at my right. The flowers presented to each graduate by Renee Baer, president of the alumni board, 
and assisted by Ms. Roberta Leonard, Vice President for College Advancement, symbolize each candidate's transition to Teal from, from Teal student, excuse me, to Teal alumnus or alumna. Graduates are encouraged to bestow their flowers upon a family member or other mentor they especially wish to thank for the su success this day represents. We now ask that the master's candidate students remain standing. Other rows, please be seated. John Aristrup. William Brenzima. <laughs> Jasim Malik Campbell. Haley Dawn Hess. <laughs> Louis John Corellis the second. Chad Picozzi. Jasmine Rose Tucker. Tyla Elise Belton Olivaria. <laughs> Randall W. Burnett, the second. Dominic A. Dorenzo. <laughs> S 
Samantha Lynn Kurchina. Jenna Nicole Petrucci. <laughs> Will the first row of undergraduate candidates please stand? Madison Taylor Acor. Jaden Agnew. Mutaz S. Alkas Ishak. Emily Nicole Baker, summa cum laude with Dean's Key. Holly Ann Barna, cum laude. Kara Ruth Baumgartner, summa cum laude with Dean's Key. Malik Anthony Beckford. Brianna, Brianna Bialata, summa cum laude with Dean's Key. Austin Bonacci. Roman Michael Booth. Brittany S. Boring, cum laude. Rachel Bell Breckenridge, summa cum laude with Dean's Key. <laughs> Megan Elizabeth Brewer, summa cum laude. <laughs> Peyton Emily Brooks, summa cum laude with Dean's Key. <laughs> Marlon David Brown. Cassandra Grace Be Cool. Magna Cum Laude. Isaiah A. Burgos. Adam Button, Cum Laude. Ashton S. Camerot. Allison Nicole Campbell, cum laude. Anna Natasha Chapman. Joshua Vance Christner, cum laude. Morgan Joyce Costello. Richard Robert Crooks, cum laude. Tiffany Amber Davison, summa cum laude with Dean's Key.
Katrina May Adams Deckinger, Kuma Sumlade. Mercini Irene Dema. Madeline Bell De Palma, cum, cum laude. Jada Alexandria De Gregorio. Austin T. Dillon, cum laude. Diana Marie Diorsi. Lauren Lee Durbro, cum laude. Mason Anthony Ami. Leah A. Andres. Peyton Carlisle Ennis. Ulrich Anthony Francis, Jr. Frank D. Hugman, summa cum laude, with Dean's Key. Brianna Marie Gallo. John Michael Guineer, Jr. Courtney Page Gassner, magna cum laude. James R. Gilbert, Jr., magna cum laude. Anna Elizabeth Gordon, cum laude. Colton Michael Greenlee. Bailey Elizabeth Gregor. Cameron R. Griffin. Courtney P. Grubbs, summa cum laude, with Dean's Key. Kaylee Virginia Guy. Charity Berger Hall. Emily Harriman, summa cum laude, with Dean's Key. Kevin C. Han. <laughs> Megan C. Hepler. <laughs> Isaiah Julius Hill. <laughs> Zachary Thomas Hungchuk, magna cum laude with Dean's Key. Dahlia Sue Jacks, magna cum laude. Alexis Nicole Jewell, summa cum laude with Dean's Key. Alyssa J. Jordan.
Emily Grace Kaltaler, summa cum laude with Dinsky. Salem Kalen Salam. Haley Kendall. Adriana Jean Kimball, summa cum laude with Dinsky. Ashton Don Kirkwood, summa cum laude with Dinsky. Elena Marie Kirchner. Clarence W. Kaiser, Jr. Derek Stephen Knapp, summa cum laude with Dinsky. Samuel Jacob Lambert. Nicholas J. Lenchek. <laughs> Charles Frank Lichtenwalder. Kumis Mlada Dinsky. <laughs> Logan James Long, Summa Cum Laude. <laughs> Alexander Carl Lutz, Summa Cum Laude with Dinsky. Daniel J. Lutz, summa cum laude with Dinsky. <laughs> Taylor C. Lutz, summa cum laude with Dinsky. <laughs> Zachary Thomas Lyons, summa cum laude with Dinsky. <laughs> Emily Caitlin Markavish. Kaylee M. Martin. Mandy Lee May. Catherine Nicole McKeever, magna cum laude. Khalil Masai. Catherine Miller, summa cum laude with Dinsky. <laughs> Jameer Anthony Thomas Mitchell. <laughs> Brittany Marie Moon. <laughs> Darian Emmanuel Mosley. Kayla Anna Marie Mulvey. Daniel R. Myers. Madison J. Neely, sum cum laude with Dinsky. Bradley Novak. <laughs> Justin Tyler Ola, magna cum laude. <laughs> Jacob L. Orzik. <laughs> Josephine Ann Oscar. Alexis Danielle Polonis. <laughs> Ava May Park, summa cum laude. <laughs> Emma Parsons. Evan J. Petrisky. Kayla Marie Pham, cum laude. C. 
Sydney Marie Polarski, summa cum laude, Widinski. Logan Dean Pistorius, summa cum laude, Widinski. Dylan Michael Proper. Anthony Joseph Rego, magna cum laude. Dylan Ralston. John Patrick Retton. Jonathan Camden Russell, cum laude. Yen Wen Sa. Lucas James Sadowski. Adonis P. Scriven. Emily Sears, summa cum laude with Deansky. Molly Elizabeth Shepler, summa cum laude with Deansky. Jacob Shingler. Maxwell Anthony Joseph Seguenza, magna cum laude. Daquan D'Angelo Simmons. <laughs> Catherine R. Solers, magna cum laude. <laughs> Justin Starks. <laughs> Ryan Stiles, magna cum laude. Ethan Matthew Stishan, magna cum laude. <laughs> Ahmad Te Tejamala, cum laude. <laughs> Colleen Mackenzie Trainer. <laughs> Shay Mackenzie Tressler, cum laude. Abigail R. Triscuit, summa cum laude, Budinsky. Shiley Raylan Turner. Jonathan Unterkofler. Hannah Alish Yushak, cum laude. Alan Lee Ventura, sum cum laude with Deansky. Samantha R. Walker, summa cum laude. Taylor Alexis Warner. Dylan T. Washevich. Devin James Whitebarth, cum laude. <laughs> Jamin Avery Wentling, magna cum laude. <laughs> Madeline H. Whiteman, summa cum laude with Dean's Cave. <laughs> Andre O. Williams. Trey Michael Williams. Victoria B. Young, cum laude. Jacob Zane Zilka.
congratulate these students again. Okay, now graduates, this is the moment. Please graduates stand. We congratulate all of the members of the class of 2022, those with us and those listed in the program. Upon the recommendation of the faculty of Teal College and with the approval of the Board of Trustees, you are accorded the degrees to which you are entitled with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto pertaining. Having your degrees, you may now move your tassel from the right side to the left side of your cap. Please, everyone, join me in welcoming these graduates, the class of 2020. Before we conclude this afternoon, I have a couple of announcements. After the ceremony, please remain in your seats until after the recessional, including the class of 2022, has cleared the auditorium. Join us at the Howard Miller Student Center patio for a reception honoring today's graduates. Special legacy photographs will be taken for those graduates whose family members are Teal College alumni immediately following the commencement ceremony on the steps of Greenville Hall. Now, would you please rise for the singing of the alma mater found in your program and remain standing for the benediction. Give us your help and guidance. Protect us in our travels and in our life journeys. And bring us back together soon in peace and wholeness. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us now and forever. Amen. <laughs>